Planet Minerva. I hope you're all having a wonderful week and today I'd like to share a make with you for this simplicity vintage dress. So I think it's a really super classic shape. We're going to be making this one version A so you also have the option to make the coat to go with it and to give it a really fun twist today I think that this particular design, Breton Reverie in the Viscose Chalice, it's one of our Minerva exclusive range fabrics, will look super in this particular dress. I think the nice clean lines and the fun print on this will really bring it up to date and give it something extra. So that's what we're going to be using today. Now this particular fabric is 150 centimetres wide, it's a light to medium weight, it's woven and it's 100% viscose. It's got a really nice feel to it. So I think that's going to make a really pretty dress. Now should you wish to sew along with us today, all you have to do is watch out for these items below because I will link everything in the description. So you need to watch for the simplicity pattern The Viscose Chalet, in Breton Reverie, a matching thread, some bias tape and some shoulder pads. Now while you're here why not take a look at the Minerva Craft Club. With the Minerva Craft Club you will get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. And that includes anything that you buy with us today. We'd also love it if you create a free account. With a free account you can connect with our wonderful sewing community of like-minded sewers from all over the world. You can share your projects, ideas and inspiration. It's a really fun place to share your sewing hobby and it's all completely free. So why not go ahead and do that now? Now before we begin we want to wash and prepare our fabric as we would normally. So if you normally wash and tumble dry or wash and line dry, do that now. And when you're prepared, we're going to take our pattern and the tape measure and locate our sizing on the back. Always do this before you begin a new pattern. This will ensure that you get the perfect fit. When you're happy with your sizing, we're going to go and cut the pattern pieces for version A. So let's go and do that together now. So I just thought I'd show a little from the inside of this pattern because these vintage patterns do have some nice little fun facts inside which I thought might be quite nice to share. So it says here, the baby boom created over 70 million teenagers in the 1960s and it was these teenagers that influenced everything from politics to fashion trends. For the first time in history, the young became the fashion leaders hemlines were getting higher and in 1966 it was officially the year of the miniskirt and in spite of these quickly changing styles from the influence of the Beatles to the signature androgynous silhouette of Twiggy everyday clothing stayed quite simple not too much trim or embellishment A-line or shift dresses in a range of lengths from high thigh to knee length were worn and fabric choices ran from Hawaiian, floral and more abstract designs. Now that's interesting because that goes really well with our fabric that we've chosen to use today. So that'll fit in really nicely with this theme. So I just thought it'd be nice to share a little of that. So now let's have a look at our pattern pieces. So here we have our pattern pieces. So this is your front of your dress and you're going to cut two pieces. Now you want to make a note of your notches, your circles and your dart markings. So these lines here and here and this is where you will lengthen or shorten at this point where these lines are. Here is your waistline point here and here is the centre front. So this particular dress has a 5.5 centimetre hem allowed. 
So just bear that in mind when you're lengthening or shortening this particular dress. Now this is the back. Now this one here, this is the centre back. Now again, you're going to cut two pieces. Make a note of your circles and your notches and your dart markings. And again, lengthen or shorten as required. Make a note of these notches here. And on the back piece, you also have a vent here. So there is a fold line here. Make a note of these markings and the broken lines. Here we have our sleeve. We're going to cut two pieces and this here is the straight grain. Make a note of the circles and the notches and these darts here. And this is your elbow point here. So you could mark this point as well. This is a sort of three quarter length sleeve on this particular dress. Then we have the back facing, here is the centre back, cut two and also cut two of interfacing. This is the front facing and here we have the centre fold here. Cut one of fabric, cut one of interfacing and note your notches here. And then we have the belt and this is cut on the fold as well. So cut one on the fold of the belt. Now we're ready to begin making our dress. So first of all you want to wind half of your thread onto your spool and check your machine needle is sharp. I'm using a standard, a universal size 70 needle today. You might like to check on a piece of scrap fabric before you begin and see what works best for you. When you've done this we're going to take our front pieces and our back pieces and we're going to stay stitch around the neck edges. So always do this in the direction of the arrows and we're working 1.3 centimetres away from the cut edge. So in this case it's from the shoulder here towards the centre. So we're going to do this on each of the neck pieces and after that we're going to make our darts. Now we're going to make our darts. So first of all our bust darts here. So you bring these markings together at the side under arm and then we're working towards this point here. So we're going in a gradual V, don't make it too sudden because you will get a bump or a bubble here if you come off too suddenly. Now we're going to create the darts in our body. Now I've put some black pins in here so that you can see more clearly. So there's two here, there's a red one here for the centre point of the dart and then there's a black one here at the top. So you may have marked these with chalk. I have put the, I've put these pins in at this point so you can see more clearly on camera. Now we're working towards a deeper pinch at the middle like this. So this is going to be pinched in here. And then it's going to come out to a point here at this point where the dart where the dart top is and the black pin and then here the dart bottom where the black pin is here so we're working to a point either side of this pinch in the middle so you've got your markings from your pattern you've marked them on this is the widest point of your dart now what i like to do is start in the middle and work outwards and then back tack here and work outwards again because I find it's just easier to come off at a nice point if you do it from the centre point here so that's what I'm going to do so I'll show you that now so you're working from this deepest point here in the middle or this widest point I should say and you want to back tack that as well and then again you're working to a gradual V and coming off and letting your thread run free. So we're going to knot it here, then we're going to go back to that centre point and go over it and work out towards the other side. I just find if you try and do it all in one go, you don't come off as cleanly on the edge of the uh, dart. You won't get 
get such a nice neat finish. Knot it at that side. Push your knot towards your dart. You can get rid of these threads at the middle now. Now repeat on all of your darts and press those towards the centre once they are finished. Now on your back piece you've also got a dart here at the shoulder. So you have markings here and here going towards a point here. So you need to make this dart also. Now we're going to stitch in the darts in our sleeves. So they are here and here. So bring those markings together, so right sides together, working towards the point again. Now you're going to stitch your two front pieces together down this centre front seam here. So pin it first and this is going to have a 2.5 centimetre seam. Stitch down your central back seam from your notch here. Now you can just baste along here roughly or you can hand stitch. I'm just going to machine stitch mine. I'll make my machine stitch a little bigger. Now what we also want to do is we want to work down. So I'm going to go back to that point where my circle is. Back tack. down to my large dot here, back side, then I'm going to baste again, large stitch, all the way to the bottom and this is going to be unpicked so make sure you back tack here before you begin and just do a straight line of basting stitches straight down and then here you have markings, we're going to just stitch along here in a straight line from this circle, back tack again, now we're going to be snipping into this and pressing our pleat towards one side, when it's all pressed this stitching here will be unpicked but it will give us a nice neat finish if because we've got it basted first and we press it, when we unpick it, it will hang nicely. Now stitch down this side, seam allowance away from the edge. Now press it to one side, now that is entirely your preference, which way you prefer your pleat to fall. And when you've pressed it to one side, we can stitch it on the outside, to the side that you've pressed it, so that will depend which side you press your pleat to stitch it and catch it down. Now here at this point you're going to want to snip it so that you can press your back seam open. Now you're going to stitch your front to your back at your shoulder seams so pin it in position first of all, matching your notches. So it's a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance everywhere unless otherwise stated such as on that front seam where it was deeper, it was a 2.5 on the front seam, the rest of the seams are standard. Now you're going to apply your interfacing to your facing pieces, then you're going to join them together at the shoulders here. So here we have our notches at the shoulders, flip it over so it's right sides facing and pin it on either side before stitching. Now we're going to apply our interfacing pieces to our neck so we want to line up our notches, our shoulder seams 
our centre front point, so fold your facing in half and make a notch to find the halfway point and then you have the halfway point on your front because you have your central seam so line that up there, line up your shoulder seam at the other side and your notch at the back Now trim away the excess around your facing, snip into it and edge finish the raw edge now we're going to turn the facing, the seam towards the facing, and we're going to understitch here. So onto the facing, a couple of millimetres onto this seam here. So here is your seam. We're pressing this towards the facing piece, and we're stitching just here, two millimetres roughly away from the edge, all the way around to stop that facing from rolling outwards. Square off the top edges of your dress neck, so you fold back the facing here, stitch down, and then we're going to trim away this corner here, and push it through. When you've done this, if you wish, you can top stitch around your neck, so a top stitch around your neck, a quarter inch away from the edge, And down either side of your front seam. This is optional and it is a detail, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. If you are going to do it, do it at this point before we apply our zipper. So I've just opted for one line of top stitching either side down that front seam and round the neckline here. It does say you can do another line just inside that one, another quarter of an inch away, but I think one is enough because there's enough going on with this fabric and all the stripes anyway, I think. Now change to your invisible zipper foot. Now I'm using an invisible zipper today. You can still square off the top of your neckline as we did before, but what we do is just snip it here so that this bit lies flat then have your zipper directly beside of the boxed edge that we've just done at the neckline and then this side will just hang over slightly. If we just snip it here, it still lies flat. Line up with your zipper foot with your teeth here and make sure that it stays in the channel. Don't let it pucker. Sometimes some fabrics do pucker when you're uh, applying a zipper. At the top of your zip, if you've used a concealed zip, you can fold it back, fold it back again, and then hand stitch it down behind the neck here, and it will all be enclosed. So when you have your zip in place, now is the time you can add your label. So I'm adding in some Minerva Maker labels in the description below, and this is where I'm going to add mine. So I have my zip in the back neck here and I'm going to place it just behind the facing there, just next to the zip. So I'm going to make sure that's straight and I'm going to stitch that in position now. Now you're going to bring your side seams together, matching your underarms and your notches at the side here, pin it all the way down. I'm going to stitch it with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Now you will have created your darks in your sleeves here, so there's two to one side like this, then you're going to fold your sleeve in half and stitch the underarm seam. So once you've created those darts, these notches here will come together. the bottoms of your sleeves. Now I've overlocked mine so I'm just going to turn it under. So I'm just doing a single fold hem.
Now if you do a line of ease stitching along the top of your sleeve here from this marking to this marking and leave the ends running free you can then pull on those stitches to ease the rest of it in. So, so a line of ease stitching around the top of your sleeve. So we're going around this curve from this marking past this shoulder mark here down to this side. So here we have our dress now and it's the wrong way around and here is our armhole here. So here is the front so we have one notch. Turn your sleeves the right way around like this and then here we have our sleeve with the one notch at the front here. Put your hand inside and we're going to slip that in the armhole like this. And here we can line up that notch there. So we have one notch here and here. Then we have our underarm seams here. Make sure that they line up and that they're lying flat. And then round this side we have the two notches and then you can pull on this side as well look Just a little bit because you're not looking for gathers here it's just to help it fit so there should be just slight ripples around the top there look and then you can manipulate that with your fingers also as you're stitching to make sure you sort of smooth it out because we don't want definite gathers or anything there like this now open your basting stitches at the back of your vent try on your dress and decide on your hem length. So I've took a little off mine so I've took about an inch and a half off the bottom and now I'm going to do a double fold hem on mine at the bottom like this. So pin your hem in position and then we're going to stitch that in place. Fold your belt in half, right sides facing, and you're going to stitch this with a one centimetre seam. So do each end first so that you're going to this point here. So I've chosen to top stitch my belt. I just think it'll give it a nice flatter finish with it being quite light material. Plus so threads, I need to cut away there. Well, I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me today. I've really enjoyed making this dress and I think it's turned out really well in this fabric. Now, should you wish, you can add shoulder pads to the dress once it's completed. Simply try on your garment, place your shoulder pads at the shoulder and you hand stitch it in place with catch stitches in the seam. I personally think it gives it a more up-to-date modern look without the shoulder pads in, but you might like that more structured look to the dress. Now, I think this has got lots of variations with themes that you can try with this and you can really change up the look. Maybe a corduroy or a wool for the winter would look really nice and maybe a faux leather belt. Maybe do contrasting sleeves. A different colour for the top stitching down the front you could use something really bold. 
how about trying it in a denim or a chambray? I think there are just so many different ways you could change the look of this dress by just changing your fabric choices. And the coat is also a really nice additional feature to this pattern. I would love to see what you're making. Please let us know in the comments below along with any photographs. We always love to see what you've been making. Also, you can ask any questions in the comments and we'll do our best to help you in any way we can. Remember to like and follow Minerva to get more video content like this every week. And I hope to be back with another sew along really soon. Now, if you like what I'm wearing today, this particular fabric is one of our Minerva exclusive range sweater knits and this one is called Bushwork Prints and the pattern that I've used for this particular sweater is 8982, a simplicity pattern. I will stand up so you can see. If you are interested in making this sweater I will link all the products below along with the fabric for this dress. Thank you for watching today. Bye for now.